Okay, hi, welcome back. I'm Jody and we were speaking about LPIC, uh, a module about the partitions, and I want to record one extra session for this. This is not part of the LPIC officially, but it's very good to see and know and may prevent some confusion on your side if you are checking things more deep, deeper, deeper on your systems. I spoke about the swap space on the Linux. As I told you in the previous part, swap was one of the magical, amazing things on Linux. Swap lets, swap makes it possible for people to use more RAM than the RAM they have. Even on the first day, Linux Torvalds, the guru behind the Linux, Linux kernel, uh, amazed his friend by showing him this swap possibility. Say he had uh, one gigabyte of RAM on his computer. For sure, he had much less in those days, 92 we are speaking. And, but just for the simplicity, imagine he had one gigabyte. He invited his friends to his home and showed him that he can allocate two gigabytes of RAM, even three gigabytes of RAM. This was very, very, very shocking for those days. How this was possible? As I told you in the previous section, this is your actual RAM and this is your swap space. When you add some swap to your RAM, what Linux does is if someone, for example, allocs requests for uh, three gigabytes of RAM, your Linux will go and says, okay, I have one gigabyte here. I will use this disk space as extra RAM. Or nowadays on your computers, even if you have eight gigabytes of RAM, sometimes Chrome eats up six gigabytes of it. You have your operating system, you have your other parts, you have your word processor, your hacking tools, whatever you have, and it's full. Now you want to open a new program to listen to network ports. It needs one gigabyte of RAM. So your computer goes and sees, okay, I have eight gigabyte of swap space. So I will read this, I will put it here, and I will free up space and this program can start working by using this RAM. After a while, you switch back to your Chrome. So this should be in the RAM. It goes to your swap space, reads the same data, puts it in the RAM and moves this and this to the swap. This is how paging, swap, virtual memory, whatever you call it, works. This is like a magic. But where is this swap space? In previous uh, section, we were talking about partitions. So the swap I showed you was one of the partitions. For example, I was creating a disk, I was partitioning my disk. The first partition was slash boot, one gigabyte. Then I allocated, for example, 80 gigabytes to the root and everything else. And at the end I had 10 gigabytes and I said, okay, this is a partition for swap. The Linux will see this as a swap and will use this 10 gigabytes of extra memory. Remember, you cannot download more memory. I'm sure if you are watching this video, you know this, but this is a common joke on the internet. There are some apps which increases your memory. Don't download them. They will do something else. Anyway, this was the partition method, but we have other methods too. And one of them is not even mentioned in the LPIC this version 500. So I've thought it's good to record one extra and show that. Luckily, uh, we have three operating systems here. This is a Debian, Debian 11, I believe. Cat etc. Uh, Debian version, yes. This is Debian 11. And do it, does it have a swap? It's always to become root. One to three is not a good password, someone mentioned. Thank you. For sure it is not. These are virtual machines in my computer, so I use one to three, but it's better not to use them. 
on a later lesson where we are, I'm showing you how to change password, we will change this. Although this is my personal Debian. So, uh, if you issue a command like free, it will show you the status of the memory. I can do with free-h, which is human readable. In many commands, you will have this human readable switch. So, free-h will give me human readable status of the memory. It says this machine has 5.8 gigabyte of RAM and it has one gigabyte of swap. Where is this swap? We can check it. Let's check the partitions. I can do an F disk, F disk, dev SDA, P print the status, and it will tell me that this computer has three partitions. It's like this it's a hard disk. It has in general, it's 32 gigabytes. So 31 gigabyte is used as slash. The whole system is installed here. You won't see the slash here. You, can, you have to check the mount. I told you in BIOS systems, you can only have four primary partitions. A trick to overcome this is creating one, two, or even three partitions, then creating not a primary, but an extended partition. And inside that extended partition, you can create as many partitions as you want. As many as hundreds. Okay. This will be partition one, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three. You don't have the four. So, sorry, the four is this one, the extended one. So this will be five, six, seven, whatever. Even in this case that we have two partitions, the first one is SDA, because this is the first hard disk. SDA1 is this one. SDA2, 3 are reserved. Then you have one extended. And inside it, the first one will be 5, because 1, 2, 3, 4 are always used for the primary ones. So the first uh, logical partition inside the first extended partition will be called 5. Anyway. So here you have 31 gigabytes for Linux. Then it's, uh, there is an extended, so it's just a virtual one. Inside that extended partitions, there is one other partition with the Linux swap or Solaris format. You can check the same thing, not the same exact thing, but swap on will show you where this swap is. It says, okay, status of your swaps. You have one swap, it is on slash dev sda5. Its type is partition, one gigabyte. It is not used. When it's not used, this is good. On a normal Linux system, your swap shouldn't be used. If you're always using the swap, you have to think about it. It's not good. Anyway, this was the first style of swap, which we covered a lot in the previous section too. This is an Ubuntu virtual machine. My Ubuntu virtual machine Let's try top this time. Top will show you the status of the system. These are the processes which are using this CPU, the CPU, the amount of memory they are using, how long they've been running and everything. On the memory side, it says memory four gigabytes, swap one gigabyte and swap is not used. All of it is free. So the status of the system is good memory wise. But we have one gigabyte of swap. Where is this swap? Control C will break it. Control L will clear the screen. I can say swap on. It will show me the swap status. Oh, this is not slash dev blah blah. This is a normal file on the system. It's and its type is file. Its size is one gigabyte. Nothing is used. So. If I do lsltrh slash, check the slash, you can see that I have a swap file here. So on Debian, we have a swap partition. On Ubuntu 22, I have a swap file on the root file system. So it's like a file, not a separated partition. Interesting, the second style. But what is the third slide? I have a Fedora 36. 
again you can do a free dash h it will show you that you have 4.3 gigabytes of ram and you have 4.3 gigabytes of swap where is this swap even if you do a for example parted slash dev sdap just show me the status you don't have permission okay i will do this with sudo so i will have permission i only have two partitions one one gigabyte partition for boot and another 16 gigabyte for other things you cannot see it here it's just the partitions if you check the mount command you will see the status there ah uh, so where is my swap you know how we can check it swap on it says your swap is slash dev z ram zero type is partition but we didn't saw a real partition size is 4.3 what is this z ram you remember the idea of the swap was having a disk or file somewhere which can be used as a virtual ram in this case they have done a real nice trick you have this ram kernel is using this ram as the ram but now you need more ram instead of downloading ram kernel creates a virtual disk inside the ram and uses some ZRAM, so something like a zip practically compression technically this is not zip you can use different uh, compression algorithms but uh, this Z can remind you of zip which is compression so even when you see gzip it's about compression anyway what I was telling you have RAM kernel normally works with this RAM but in some specific case you have a kernel module which is called ZRAM which lets you create disks inside your RAM nowadays RAM is much cheaper you can buy easily laptop with 16 32 gigabytes of RAM it's very normal to see servers with 128 gigabytes of RAM so having a separated file for that is not feasible anymore the better idea is having the part of the ram as a disk compressing whatever is being written there and when reading from it decompressing it z ram and using this as a virtual disk in some cases people even configure the slash temp as z ram drive so you can have a slash dev zram1 as another partition and mount it on uh slash temp and your temp will be super quick unbelievable fast for sure when you reboot it it will be deleted which is not normal for a slash temp directory and in some cases people create this and only use it as a swap space practically you are increasing the size of your ram by this automatic compression normally things we write into the ram are very 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 compression friendly there are huge matrices there are huge they are huge i don't know text data database queries uh bitmap images and these kind of stuff which are very very good to be compressed so if you have a ram and you can create a disk on it and you can use this disk as ram but compressed practically you are going to have a larger ram this is a very cool trick so we saw three different styles on the latest debian we have a partition on our disks for ram for swap on ubuntu we had a file for swap and on fedora 36 we had the ZRAM. For sure, you can configure any distribution you have, Linux distribution, GNU Linux distribution you have, to use any of these. We can install ZRAM on Ubuntu, we can add a, a swap partition to our Fedora, and it's configurable. But these are the default installation which I did. As a last point, let's 
Uh, we can first ls uh, mod will show you the modules which are being used by the kernel. You can see that we have the ZRAM here. So this is a kernel module. Also, we have ZRAM CTL, which shows the configuration of the ZRAM. You can do a ZRAM help. Oh. Uh, ZRAM CTL help, sorry. And it will show you how you can use it, how you can add new ones, configure ones, and these stories. But here it will show you that we have one uh, ZRAM, ZRAM0. So part of the RAM is being used. This is the algorithm for compression. Disk size is 4.3. So we can even use whatever RAM we want. We have as this disk if it increases because it is being used as RAM but compressed so kernel can increase this size and this is mount point it is mounted as swap as I told you you could mount it as temp with the configurations ZRAM is not part of the LPIC this is very new but it's good to know I can bet that on the next uh, version of the LPIC they will add ZRAM Hope you enjoyed it. We saw three different swaps. Have fun, learn more. Jody, subscribe, do whatever you want.